the second part of our maze game tutorial, we're going to add some features in. We're going to add some diamonds for the player to collect. And we're also going to add some doors that, uh, that protect the goal area until all the diamonds have been collected. Um, we're also going to add some sound effects and some better, uh, slightly better graphics. Um, and uh, Okay. First thing in this stage we need to do is import some sprites. So let's create a new sprite. And we'll call this first one underscore SPR underscore wall uh, corner load sprite. And you'll see here there's a wall corner and a wall horizontal uh, and a wall vertical. These are just variations of the wall. This part here um, is what's making up the entire level right now. But we're going to add some different looking graphics. So I'll put an underscore back in there. Um, and uh, uncheck the transparency. Click OK. And then add another one. We'll do this for each one of those. So SPR underscore wall underscore horizontal. And we'll grab the wall horizontal. And uncheck transparent. And then um, the third one, SPR underscore wall underscore vertical. And here is wall vertical. Uh, uncheck transparent, click OK. All right, now a um, few more sprites are needed. We need to add a diamond sprite, so SPR underscore diamond. And we'll load that from the list. It's right there. This one we do want to make transparent. It's got a lot of this olive green color in the background. That should all disappear, so we want to make it transparent. And we also need doors. Underscore D-O-O-R. And here is the door. Uh, we got two kinds of doors, so I guess we'll do door, uncheck the transparent there, and then let's add another one, SPR underscore door 2, and we'll grab door 2. Okay, that is all the sprites that we need for now. Uh, let's add some sounds that we'll use later. Uh, the first sound is music, SND underscore music and there it is click OK SND underscore diamond OK and SND underscore door And finally, whoops, cancel that. SND underscore goal. All right, those are our sound files, and we'll use those in a little bit. Okay, next, we're going to uh, create some objects. We already have a wall object, but we want to um, add in some different walls that we can use uh, with the different graphics that we just added. So let's create a new object, and we'll call this obj underscore wall underscore corner, and we'll add the wall corner sprite. Um, now here's an interesting feature. Remember in our wall object we created things like collision events with the player and things like that. We've already designed our wall. It doesn't do much but we've already designed it. We could go to each one of these new wall graphics, create new wall objects for each one and design them all but that would take a long time. There's a nice feature in Game Maker called parenting and here's how that works. First of all, let me make sure this is solid. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to define a parent for the wall corner and I'm going to use our original wall as the parent. What that means is that wall corner now has all the attributes of a regular wall but 
it could also add anything else to it and those would be kind of like bonus attributes. So it's a wall, but it could also have additional attributes. In this case, we don't want any extra features. We want it to be a wall. We just want a different graphic on it and we didn't want to reprogram all this stuff. So we create this object called wall corner and we make the wall, the original wall apparent and we're good to go. It will behave like a wall everywhere that I place it. Click OK. And let's do the same thing for the other um, types of walls that we have. <clears throat> OBJ underscore wall underscore horizontal. We'll grab the wall horizontal sprite, make it solid, and make wall its parent. And then finally, OBJ underscore wall underscore vertical. Grab the wall vertical sprite, make it solid, and set the original wall to its parent. OK. Now we have all these walls. Let's jump into our room and see how this will affect things. I'm going to delete all of these wall objects that are not um, the corners. And uh, for example, here's the wall vertical. I can paint this. And uh, we can use wall corner for the corners. And then wall horizontal across here. I guess I could have deleted those corners. I forgot that it was going to look like this. Okay, so a little bit of a different look, but that's how those graphics um, are supposed to work. Uh, and again, because we made them all um, basically children of the original wall, they will act just like regular walls. Okay, let's, um, let's design our diamond object. Remember, the purpose of the diamond is that it gets collected by the player, and it, it's going to give the player points. But also, you can't get to the exit until all the diamonds have been collected. So before we do the diamond, we actually need to create the door object. So let's create that. OBJ underscore door. We'll grab the door sprite and uh, this is a solid object and it's supposed to act exactly like a wall. So what are we going to do? We're going to make wall its parent. But like I said before, we can add extra events so this acts like a wall plus some bonus abilities. So in the event, um, well, let's just leave it like that for now. We need to create our diamond object before we can um, program the special attributes here. So click OK, and let's create our diamond object. OBJ underscore diamond, diamond sprite. This is not solid. It doesn't have any parents. We're just going to click OK for now. Let's go back into our door, and we're going to add what's called a step event. A step event is something that gets checked every step of the game. If you remember, uh, Game Maker Games default to 30 steps every second. So whatever we choose for this event, whatever actions we put in this event, are going to be triggered 30 times a second. So it's a really tight loop, and it, uh, it's useful for checking things that you always need to be aware of. So choose step, and then choose regular step. Not begin or end, just regular step. Okay. Let's uh, do a test to see if there are a certain number of instances of diamonds out on the game field. So this one right here is test instance count, and that checks how many objects of a certain type are in the game still. So we bring this out. We're going to check for diamonds, and we're going to see if the number in the game is equal to zero. Click OK. Uh, if so,
grab our starting block here. Destroy self. Who is self? It's the door. So what we're just saying here is, if there's no diamonds left, make yourself disappear. And, and what that effectively does is it clears all of these um, doors out of the level as soon as there's no diamonds left. So let's click OK. And now let's take a look at the diamond object. In the event that the player collides with a diamond, so collision event with person, uh, we want to do a couple of things. First of all, we want to um, destroy self. Okay. Again, the diamond is the object that we're working on. So when we say destroy self, it's referring to the diamond. The diamond will destroy itself when the player comes in contact with it. Okay. Also, we want to play a sound. And we want to play the diamond sound. And we do not want to loop. Click OK. We also want to affect the score. So let's go to score. And we're going to say set the score to 10 relative, meaning increase the score by 10 every time the player touches a diamond. OK. That looks pretty good. Click OK. Um, jump back into the door for a second. I forgot to change something. Um, when the doors are destroyed, we also want to play a sound. So let's go in here. Let's see. Uh, main one, play a sound. And we want to play the door sound. And do not loop it. OK. Uh, now we're in business. So the last thing we should do is go to the um, goal object and let's take a look in here. If the player uh, comes in contact with the goal, we're going to check to see if the, a room exists. If so, we'll go to the next room, otherwise we'll restart the game. Okay, let's do a couple more things. First of all, let's add a sound. We'll put that right at the top. And we will play the goal sound and we will not loop it. And let's also set the score. So let's go down to score. And let's set the score to 40 relative. So basically when the player completes a level and touches the goal, we'll give them 40 points for moving to the next level. OK, now if the player um, touches the goal, we do these things and we try to find a next room. If there is one, we'll go to the next room. But if there's no next room, uh, what we want to do is not just restart the game, we also want to display the high score. And you can do that with this item right here, show high score. So we will show the high score. Uh, there's some options here. You can set different colors for it. Let's leave that alone for now. So we'll show the high score. And once the high score is done, you have to like click on it or hit a key to make it go away. Then, uh, then we will restart the game. Let's click OK on that. And uh, we only have this one room so far. And to test this out properly, we need to set some things up. First of all, let's put some doors around our goal so that it can't be touched until the diamonds are gone. Uh, and of course, we need some diamonds. Otherwise, the um, game uh, would immediately take the doors away because it wouldn't find any diamonds there. Um, OK, so there we go. And that game basically is playable. Um, it would be nice to have a second room, however. Let's create a second room. Again, it's 32 by 32. Let's uh, really expand this. <clears throat> I'm going to add in, uh, I'll do the old fashioned wall for speed's sake here. Um, whoops. OK, 
Okay, we'll put a goal down here and some diamonds. And of course, some doors. And um, that's good. Now we'll have a couple of rooms to test out. Additionally, um, we could create a third object. I forgot we have this other sprite up here, a door two. Um, really easy to add a different looking door if you want to. So let's create a new object. We'll call this obj underscore door two. We'll choose the door two sprite and solid. And then to make it a parent of, uh, just make the other door its parent and it gets all the attributes of that. Which, what you're seeing here is kind of a linking of of inheritance. So the door, door two, not only gets all of door's attributes, it also gets all of the original wall's attributes because wall is a parent of door and door is a parent of dare two, door two. So door two is kind of stacking these abilities that are all built up behind it. You know, kids get the abilities of their parents in most cases. So that's the analogy there. Click OK and let's test this game and see if everything is working correctly. Okay, I'm not hearing any music. Oh, I forgot to add in the background music. That's okay. So let's move our character around. Okay, we got the sound effects for the diamond working. Here it goes. And there is the goal. You will notice in these tutorials that uh, there are some sound effects reused. Um, but that's what we get. Okay, now we're on layer two. Oh, but the problem is I never placed a player in level two. So let's go back in and fix that. In our room, of course, we need a person. Okay, incidentally, if you wanna test rooms, you can just drag the stacking order of the rooms right here. So I can drag this one up to the top. And now that's the next one that we'll play. So when I test this, it'll start in room three um, if you wanted to test that out. But I actually don't want to do that. So uh, let's try that again. Okay, this time, when this game is over, we should get the high score display. And there it is, I can type in my name and um, I can press escape to close it. And now we're back at level one. Okay, uh, so there you go. That's the second stage of our maze game. Um, and we're going to add more things from there.